Hey, you're at Steve Tech. I'm Steve. I'm going to show you some dyno stuff today. So I'm going to show you exactly how things are working, uh, how the dyno absorber uh, functions, and even give you a heads up and let you in some top secret information of how I actually do stuff and how I've made these absorbers to hold the kind of horsepower that they do hold. Now, this is the one that uh, I just broke. Uh, I just repaired it right now, and I just hit, knocked out a couple bearings in it. So. Uh, it has two bearings up in the front here, one bearing in the back, and this is these are the rotor sections. They're inside uh, shaft, and then water in, water in, a vent, and then water out is on the very bottom. But I'll show you that on the tear apart version, and then kind of explain how things actually work and what's going on inside an absorber. Now there are different kinds of absorbers. This is a uh, basically a straight vein. Uh, absorber Stutzka style or and this is just really heavily modified here and I'll show you how I'm building my billet absorbers uh, right over here now uh, some of the first things you'll notice is that lots of people are still using drive shafts this is actually the drive shaft this is motor side this is absorber side so this little uh, plate here which I just had made too uh, this bolts to the actual shaft that's in here, just like so. Okay. I mean, there's pieces and parts that are missing here, but this is the absorber shaft right here. All right, this shaft right here. Now we actually make this because I make these flanges and this actual shaft because I got tired of breaking these things all the time and tired of spinning the shaft on there because I used to use a tapered hub. Um, so this is where the rotor goes. Rotor goes here, bearings, bearing right there, and then this basically goes here and there's a flex plate right in the way. Then on the motor side, if you go backwards here, on this side, uh, on, we don't just run a regular flywheel on the dyno, we actually run a spring-loaded uh, plate. So real similar to a clutch plate. In fact, it basically is a really overrated clutch plate. Uh, no slippage or anything, but that spring-loaded center absorbs the harmonics so it keeps harmonics all the harmonics from transmitting through the shaft through the shaft because those harmonics break stuff uh, add to a lot of problems in fact i have been using this style spline shaft uh, for a few years now because after any and all drive shafts typical drive shaft with u-joints after breaking drive shafts breaking u-joints sending drive shafts through the ceiling, through the truss, and through the roof of one of my shops, I stopped using those things. Now everything has to be lined up perfect, which is the other reason why you don't see, uh, if you see a lot of other people's dyno videos, you'll see the motor go rock. In fact, if you look at some of my real old videos, you'll see the motor rock from the torque. Uh, in all my new videos, you don't see the engine move at all. I mean, it's you, outside of listening to it, you can't see it run. Well, that's because the engine is is lined up perfectly with all the shaft here this is all lined up perfectly and in order to do that we have to have it very secure so everything is solid there's no movement in the cart no movement in the motor uh, so we can keep everything aligned okay so that's just on the shaft side of things and I'll be putting this all back together here in the next day or two the absorber is all done, but I just have to get everything back together in the in the uh, the stand. So now, how does this dyno work, or how does the absorber work? Okay, it is uh, basically this is a fairly inefficient but uh, still usable torque converter. Okay, so now this is a, a dual rotor. So there's a rotor here that goes in there, and then there's a rotor on the other side. That's what this dual rotor setup is. All right, one, two. That rotor's right in there, and that rotor's right in there. All right, so what happens is water comes in through here, comes in down towards the center of the rotor. There's a shaft that goes through here. And as water comes through here, the centrifugal force of this spinning inside here spins all the water to the outside and as this water comes up through the outside, it tries to fill up these passages, these little uh, 
and, well, we'll just call them passages there and then passages here. And as that water is full in there, it, the absorber is trying to shear and actually cut the water. And that's what's we're applying load. So the more water that's in here, the more pressure that's in here, the less we let escape, the more load it applies. So as this is trying to load it, just like what a torque converter does, then this absorber, which is on pillow blocks, show you right here. So then that's what it is internally. So this absorber, which is on a pillow block bearing here, like this, okay? So there's no, it's just freely moving. It's trying to twist. So you're trying to, it is actually trying to twist this absorber down from the rotational force and the water shearing itself inside, all that is applying force to it, the load. So it very much is exactly, it pretty much is a torque converter, uh, like what's in your car. A little inefficient because it doesn't have to do all the things of a regular torque converter and we have to load it in different speeds and different uh, ratios and backwards, forwards, because this my dynos will run backwards too. So long complicated story there. But uh, that is the basics of how that works. Now, some of the insights of what we do, uh, you'll notice here, we'll go over and we'll look at the my number one dyno and I'll show you something here. So as we come over here, this dyno I've only modified to about a 3,000 horsepower level. So I have the same shafts inside, I have all of that, but as you can see, water comes in, splits off, goes on this side, goes on this side for each rotor, and then this is a vent. Okay? So let's go back over. Oh, and that down here you can see the valves. Those are the outlet valves. So we monitor and control how much water leaves the dyno and the way that we do that is we measure temperature. So how much temperature it creates by that frictional force of the water shearing against itself generates heat, obviously. We're shearing water. Okay, same reason why your torque converter in your car builds a lot of temperature. It's shearing the oil. Okay, so what we do is we control how much, similar to like a, for pro modified guys or somebody like that, dump valves, a dump valve for your converter charge pressure. So we're doing that all via here uh, with the outlet valves of how much we're dumping off and then inlet valve of how much we're putting in and how much pressure we're putting in. Okay, but you can see here, this is a single end, single end on a dual rotor setup with a center vent. That's a typical deal outside of the internal modifications that I do on these. Uh, that's a standard way the dynos uh, operate. So let me go show you what we've done over here on my big dyno and the bigger horsepower stuff. So this is the billet dyno, but as I said before, like over in the other dyno, there's a cover right here. There's a cover right here. Looks just like this. All right. And water just comes in here. You notice no water goes on that side. Water is only over here. In fact, the only water that ever can get across this literally has to go through that crack right there to somehow, as this thing's spinning, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten thousand RPM, somehow water is supposed to go across this to get in here and be utilized. Guess what? It don't freaking happen. I have some modified rotors that I use. And this does do a little bit. This is an old rotor, uh, no good rotor. But you can see here, instead of just having to go over the center section here, it does also have at least a little bit that water comes up here, fills this cavity, and at least will go over here to get like the outside tip of this area. In fact, you can see where the water runs right in these outside tips. Never gets down here, only runs on the outside. Over here, you can see that water is running a little farther down, down in here, down that area. All right, so what we have done is on this dyno, you see, this is my prototype dyno, and I still run this. I'm putting water on both sides, this side of the rotor and this side of the rotor. Now, 
what you do have to do is the uh, you cannot just put water into the absorber and then out have it twist around and then have it output it does have to have a vent so it, with proper venting now this or this one because now instead of using the center passage as a vent because I modify and make this bigger you can see that this one here on the billet absorber is a lot bigger you know that's a dash 20 fitting I think it's like a one inch something hole and comes down in here splits off and does both side both insides of the rotors this is doing the same thing we've made this bigger internally so water in water in all the way around the impeller and it goes into the uh, close to the center water then spins around and goes out you have to have a vent on the back side of it <laughs> so this vent now is directional so this this absorber is actually only one direction because I've changed the way the venting is the venting can only be after see the the rotation goes this direction so water comes in here water builds up pressure all the way around here and then by the time it the water comes around it goes to the outside really hard because of centrical force this little area has a, is just a vent there's no water right here tons of water right here no water right here because it's already spun its way all the way around and then is is you know sheared against itself made its load torque etc etc so that's why uh, after I changed this vent which used to just make it uh, directional because there was no water on this inside of the rotor there was nothing there was absolutely nothing so you could put a vent there and that's why there's a vent there stock and why this doesn't work any longer when I do this uh, rotation so as you can see on the actual uh, stand that it goes in water in water in water in water in uh, a lot of water compared to the other dyno over there but the other dyno works great. I mean, you know, I've never had as much horsepower on that dyno as I have on this one. Uh, obviously, more water equals more load. If you can have it applied properly and have the right venting, the right outlet size, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Now this is the load cell right here. Now as that absorber, see the, the pillow block bearings go, go right there on the stand. So the absorber is right here and it sits nice and free in fact if it's not attached to this it would just sit there and spin 100 you know 360 degrees in fact i've never broken one yet but there's always a possibility if uh, this load cell ever breaks um it is going to send my absorber just to spinning like crazy and it's just going to knock everything out if it tears off the lines it would just sit there and it's just going to be carnage so actually I, on this dyno and on the other dyno i actually have a safety strap just in case something breaks there, so I'm not damaging everything else. But as you can see, this is how that all works, and there's there's a bunch of stuff that's in the load control, electronics. I don't really do electronics. I just know how the mechanical things work and think of things in a common sense form of this works like this, so if I do this, this must work. That kind of stuff. But uh, as far as the electronics all go, they're on the other side here, and the control units out there for controlling the valving for water in. So anyways, uh, I think that's a pretty good illustration in some of exactly how the dyno works, how it absorbs horsepower, um, or torque, doesn't really absorb horsepower, sorry, absorbs that torque and then transmits that torque to the load cell for measuring actual load on this cell. So it, the math is pretty close, it's not exact, but uh, it's basically one foot from the center of the absorber to the center of this load cell so uh, one pound of force is one pound of torque uh, a thousand foot pounds of torque is a thousand foot pounds of or a thousand foot pounds of torque is a thousand pounds right here so if uh when this thing is spinning it's, it's actually quite amazing that this load cell uh does hold uh three thousand plus pounds uh of torque is what this one is this is a three thousand pound load cell so you literally can hang three thousand pounds on that eyelet and that bolt and it does work it's amazing and just hang that weight right there so uh, that's how this all works i hope this has been informative for you so a little more information how the dynos work how we're doing things here how our changes take a, uh, take effect and um, i'm just hoping to give you guys good information stuff that you can learn 
So anyways, I'm Steve Morris, Steve Tech. Have a great day.